Hi everyone and welcome back to Abundantly Minimal. My name is Sarah and today we're tackling minimalist storage areas. I want to show you how I've been organizing things in different closets and cabinets and drawers and any other storage type areas so you can get some advice about how to do that. This video, I don't want to say is more hands-on, but I'm not going to be talking about things as much directly like with me on camera. I'll be more so showcasing the different spaces themselves. But I think in general, a couple helpful principles with storage is to really reflect what is the ideal type of stuff to be storing in this spot. How can I use my storage strategically to make my life easier? Number two, how can I make sure my storage areas are not overloaded? Because if we have overloaded storage areas where it's difficult to remove things and put things back, we're not going to be able to or want to maintain it very easily. And lastly, it's always important to reflect how much do we actually need. We all have different lifestyles and uses for things, but making sure we're not storing too much just for the sake of storing it because we have it. Let's get started first here with our coat closet. We've done a lot of improvements here and I'm excited to show you. All right, I have just opened up the coat closet here and I want to share kind of how we've organized it. So there's a couple principles here. We really only have the coats we need. I know some people will have kind of coats filling their whole closet. For both of us, we have a light jacket, like a very light one. And then we've got a medium jacket each and then a heavier jacket, as well as like some scarves and whatnot. And for us living in Illinois, there's four very distinct seasons. We also, this is an organizer. We did get this on Amazon. This is like a reusable bag or purse holder. And so we do probably have a few extra reusable bags we could go through. But we've got a couple favorite ones from Trader Joe's. Um, this is like a little travel bag, little backpack. So we've got those for different purposes, but we do like this kind of hook because there are three different layers. It just helps things be, you know, a bit more organized. Previously, what didn't work was that we were using these two command hooks to hold all the bags, but there were constantly bags falling off. Now what we've done is repurpose this for like cleaning storage. So we've got this duster, which we love. It's a reusable pad that you can wash. It's a little dusty right now. <laughs> but having that vertical storage is easy as well. And then these grids we kind of assembled to fit the space perfectly. So um, since these bags kind of hang down, we purposely kept it kind of low. But this is where we keep our shoes and um, all of that in one central spot. Uh, the only thing I don't have out, I've got a pair of flats that are in our other closet and I haven't switched out a couple pairs of sandals yet. Um, I also should switch back those black uh, flats. We have this little handheld vac that can just chill on top there. And we've got our other vacuum. And it's currently pretty small, but there is a, um, that little garbage can there is currently our donation bin or the bin for things that need to go elsewhere. We also temporarily, my parents had a Roomba, like one of the first versions of it and like never used it after a while. Um, so I um, am borrowing it from them. We're testing it out to see if we might want to do a robot vacuum in the future. And then this little uh, organizer here uh, is just something that we're using to store. We've got some hand sanitizer, extra masks, um, some different you know keys and whatnot. And um, with that, it's just easy to have things in one place and it fits perfectly on top of the metal cubes. So it's not anything fancy by any means, but this is by far the most success we've ever had at having an organized coat closet and we're thrilled with it. This has been going on several months and there's been no issues we are easily able to maintain. Up here, um, there's not a whole lot going on. We've got yoga mats rolled up. We've got a bin for outerwear. And then this is normally where we store bird seed, but it's all empty. Uh, and an umbrella. The umbrella though has sometimes hung up on this hook, so I'll actually have to look at that. <laughs> Let's go take a look at another storage space. All right, taking a look in the kitchen here, this is one of our cabinets where we store uh, different glasses and whatnot. Now, something, what I wanna show here, it's nothing really fancy, 
but um, we switched out. We had, I don't remember what was in that top shelf before, but we were reorganizing and decided since the blender is right here, it was much more convenient to store some protein powder and some other like supplement powders that we'll put in smoothies right here. We used to have these, you know, several steps away in another cabinet, but why not just have them conveniently located right there? So I encourage you to reflect about your space and where you're storing things. Another storage area is where we store pots and pans. We used to try to fit a lot more on these shelves, but since we've simplified it, it's just so much easier to get what you need because you just grab the pan or pot that you need. And we currently have some that are dirty right now from lunch, but basically having a couple of the uh, pans here. Um, so there's one here and then a smaller one back there, and it just makes it easier to know right where things go and not have to dig around for a stack. And this is just uh, protects the inside of the pan. All right, we are now in our closet in the office. Now, a couple things to point out here. This is definitely, if we had a, like a basement, this would be kind of basement style items. This is our, I don't wanna call it a dumping ground for the space, but one of our worst um, storage areas. But at the same time, we've really done some strategies here that I think are helpful. So I know I talked about in my house tour video, we don't have any room in the house for these extra dining chairs, so they are flipped upside down over this workbench area to save space, and it does work. What I want to talk about here is being strategic about the big picture. So with my husband Jake and I, we currently live in this condo. We've been in here for about three and a half years at this point, and we probably still have another one to two, maybe three years here. But then we'll be moving into a traditional house. And so we knew we needed some sort of piece of furniture, if you will, or organization system to help us in this closet. But we wanted to think about what is something that we'll for sure be able to use in the future. And one of those things was this workbench. This was definitely a bigger purchase, also in size, it's a bigger uh, thing. And it's generally not used for closet organization, but we knew we would definitely have that or want that in the future and purchased it now so we don't have to buy another thing later and we can get more use out of it. And because of that, we've got like different extra spare towels for like drop cloths and uh, dirtier cleaning projects. We keep our board games uh, located on that top shelf, a couple different related business um, and photography props, if you will, as well as a few like other toolboxes and, or not toolboxes, but there's a toolbox below and a piece for the Roomba and some extra metal grids. So basically we figured out what our long-term needs were going to be so we could purchase a resource to organize them strategically. So I encourage you to uh, try that. And then also, this is more tucked away. These are specific uh, storage for a lot of our work and some school supply extras, um, some extra books there. And so we're just really utilizing that wall storage, but also knowing that, for instance, with this chair here, it's a lot tougher to get to these spots. So these are materials we don't use very regularly. And that's the way we're able to, you know, prioritize the things we do use more often. All right, I'm now in the bedroom. This is my dresser. And with this, we never actually picked out the dressers. We were very appreciative that my grandparents, um, they were downsizing and, and let us have these. With that, something I do on a seasonal basis is rotate out seasonal clothing from the opposite season. So it is springtime. I'm filming this in May. And so something that we can, something I do, this actually, this drawer is kind of busted up. This is the worst drawer. So I hardly want to open it because it's difficult. It doesn't slide as smoothly as the others. But in here, I actually have my winter clothing. The stuff that I don't choose to wear when it's not winter. I just have things rolled up here. Certainly they don't look, you know, super organized how I've put them in there but they are out of my way in the closet and other drawers when it's not their season. And it allows me to be able to have a more open and streamlined space. You don't need as many hangers then, and you can get the other clothing you need 
more easily. I do usually though, when I pull them out for the fresh season, I usually do just wash everything just so it smells fresh and get some of the wrinkles out and that kind of thing. But highly recommend this strategy. All right, we are now in the walk-in closet in our bedroom and I wanna point out these bins here in the corner. We find having them stacked in the corner here is helpful uh, just to keep them tucked out of the way, um, be also, but also still not too hard to access things if we have to lift bins across the top. A couple of things I'll point out here. Um, something that we feel in general, especially as we've been doing this more, I know we've often talked about the one box method. So if you've got one of these bins or one box to fit different sentimental items, so this top one here, those are a lot of Jake's sentimental items. This was actually a bin um, that we did not pick out. I'm not sure if we actually picked out any of these. They might have just been, uh, you know, things that we were given from a family member uh, where they were being stored or that kind of thing. But it can be really helpful to have a space constraint for certain types of goods. When we have a space constraint, we are forced to keep the best things that are most important to us and the other stuff just doesn't fit. So uh, that's helpful. I know I actually switched mine out. So up here at the top is, there's the sandals I was telling you about earlier. Um, there at the top, I actually switched from one bin to two smaller bins. So the one on the right is more of my sentimental like paper items. And then I've got photos and the one on the left. And then also thinking about how you can apply that with containing other belongings. So. This green one is our gift wrap bin. Now we don't do gift wrap much. The funny story is that we've never actually bought any ourselves. Um, I was, I remember uh, the first Christmas I was, I think Jake and I were married and it was our first Christmas together as a married couple. And I was horrified by the amount of wrapping paper <laughs> his family exchanged with gifts. And so, I was like, I can't let that, all this be wasted. And also I personally am very frugal, didn't want to have to buy my own wrapping later because it was all in great condition. So that first <laughs> Christmas, I gathered up a bunch of the wrapping paper and gift bags and whatnot. And genuinely, we've been married eight years almost and never had to <laughs> buy any more. Uh, so we store some of that there as well as some extra um, decor, very limited decor. I'm not really into that kind of stuff, but... Um, Having the one bin is nice because it doesn't expand past that. You keep it minimal there, and uh, I think that can be a great approach. All right, there you go. That wraps up this video about some minimalist storage areas. I'm hopeful that some of these different tips and ideas resonated with you, and maybe you can even apply some in your own space. I have a few different free decluttering guides and some minimalist eBooks that are linked in the description field below. If you're looking to learn more about some of these different topics or you need a little bit of extra push or motivation, and feel free to check out some of these videos here on the screen that you might also like. Lastly, if you're new around here and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that right up here. It helps out the channel a lot and then you're much more likely to see new content that's coming your way. Thank you so much and have a good rest of your day. Bye.